Welcome back TCS TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here from the camera store and I've got another unsung cameras of yesteryear here for you. Today we're looking at the Canon PowerShot Pro One, yes, the eight megapixel bridge camera wonder with an L series lens. I'm excited to play with this today. And uh, it's winter time in Alberta, of course, so it's freezing cold and I'm going to attempt to take photos in our yellow and brown hued world that we live in here in Alberta. It really is a tough shooting opportunity. So you know what, I think I'm just gonna celebrate the beauty that is the sterile and cold Alberta environment downtown Calgary here today but we've got some nice light. Hopefully we'll have a good time with this. All right, so I just wanna take this opportunity to first off, thank Mike Drew, our favorite local journalist for letting us borrow his Canon Pro One, which amazingly is working after, you know, 13 years of hard abuse. It's gonna, it's gonna create a problem. I'm gonna put a caveat out here because as far as image quality testing and stuff goes today, take it all with a grain of salt because this lens is chocked full of dust, uh, like, moonscape on here you know the image quality we get is the image quality we're going to get but thank you mike drew it's still running much like all of his gear beat up and ugly but still running now the powershot pro one is a 2004 camera and you know there was a really interesting thing going on at this time six megapixel slrs were very popular the nikon d70 was doing really really well but for compact point and shoot cameras, eight megapixels was the new frontier and a whole bunch of new cameras had just come out. The Damage A2, the A28, the PowerShot Pro One, all of these cameras that were really trying to give people compact power and win them over in a marketing sense with high megapixels. Eight was a huge deal. We got a CCD in here and unfortunately, although that gave good resolution, it led to an issue and that was poor low light performance. This camera goes from 50 to 400. ISO and it gets noisy at 100, 200 and 400 just look abysmal, but this was the space race, if you will, at the time. Manufacturers trying to outcompete each other with big megapixels. So going back to 2004, I remember this time very well. I mean, this was some Cold War sh it was like a space race and uh, unfortunately the people that lost that war were the end users because just too many compromises trying to cram so much of these cameras the technology wasn't there now the pro one's claim to fame was its l series lens and outside of their camcorder division this is incredibly rare you don't find l series unless they're full frame lenses on an interchangeable slr but here it was actually very sharp lens but because of its compact nature lots of fall off lots of chromatic aberration and this was commonplace for cameras at the time. You know, one thing I will say though, everybody was marking their own gimmick. You got L-series lenses here, the Sony had its big rotating grip on the 828 to so get different angles. The Konica Minolta Damage A2, it was featuring electronic stabilization. And so one great thing about wartime production is you get these huge advances in technology, things that we now take for granted and enjoy today. Now, I'm trying to get some separation of the background, and actually the 28 to 200 that comes on the PowerShot Pro One is not bad for aperture speed. 2.4 to 3.5, it's okay. Uh, but the focusing on the other hand, I mean, I'm in central focusing mode. I'm trying to get it to go here. It's a pretty big square. Uh, I remember this from back in the day. These cameras love to give you the green confirmation that you're in focus, but you are not. So I'm gonna struggle with this for about an hour, but this is really one of the difficult things on the Pro One the autofocusing just at the time wasn't stellar on these cameras. SLRs were so much more effective and uh, these cameras really had a hard time. So as you can see, and as you're probably gonna see quite a bit today, uh, Calgary has a little known feral bunny problem. Somebody just let their domesticated bunnies go and you know, have some hot times and now we got bunnies all over this area. So I'm gonna try to take a picture of this one here and you know, 200 millimeters, it's not bad, I mean, I like the, the range. They were really going for, uh, you know, a good general purpose bridge camera range. And a big part of that too, I think, is the Sony 828 that this camera is competing directly against. The Sony had the same kind of two third inch sensor. Uh, it had a 28 to 200 millimeter lens as well, but it was quite gargantuan. And I will say one big benefit with the Pro One, it's got a killer grip, it's got that same range, it's a nice fast lens, but the camera itself is actually very compact and very small. So as far as portability goes, this was excellent, especially if you compare it against something like, you know, a Nikon D70. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's still not a masterpiece at all. So here's a good example, not only of the fact that we are inundated with bunnies, but if you look in the corners, you should hopefully be able to see on the concrete there and the grass, those dark corners. And again, just condition of this particular lens to have a lot of fall off wide open. All right, so I'm zooming, as you can see here through this chain link fence, the lens front is small, so I can actually get right through the links here. But uh, as you can see, I'm using this electronic zoom uh, mechanism, and I'm, I'm really not a big fan of this. I'm sure it makes the camera a little bit smaller, but it wastes battery life. Uh, you have a hard time stopping exactly where you want it to go, right? It's just preset movements. I far preferred the Minolta Damage 2 and the Fuji at the time as well that had a mechanical helicoid. Saves battery life, makes sense. I know exactly where I want to go. Uh, and battery life is an issue on this camera for sure. So I guess we'll just head down here to the river and uh, check it out. Oh, hang on, I'm gonna take a picture of this uh, hipster's paradise going on right here. Beautiful. So the Pro One has both an EVF and a viewfinder. As you can see, it's a flippy screen, 235K dots on, on both, actually. The EVF is, of course, terrible, but that's not a detraction against the Pro One. That's really just the fact that it was 2004. I mean, they were garbage, and I could see why people were so adamant on optical viewfinders over these things. Of course, you know, the future shows that now we love them. But this flip screen is useful, and again, I do miss this full articulating flip screen. It very much reminds me of the PowerShot S2IS that I used to have. But uh, very handy, even in a situation here. You know, this is before cameras were really starting to develop a lot of the benefits that EVF let us have. For example, there's no live histogram on this camera, no auto switcher. I'm finding that kind of a, you know, I'm so used to bringing my eye up, I've got to switch it with an actual button. But, you know, overall, very simplistic control interface. I do love the grip, though. Very skinny on the fingers, but really, really nice fitting in the hand. It's got a good, solid feel. You're not touching anything you're not supposed to. I never feel like I'm going to drop it. It's a nice weight. It's funny, though. You've got all this space on the camera, but really, the Pro One kept everything very, very sparse. You don't have a lot of equipment on here. Basic buttons for flash and macro, continuous shooting, but otherwise, very, very simple interface. All right, so you can probably see we've got a top LCD right there, a la SLR mode. Again, I think an attempt to really make the Pro One like a pro photographer's pocket camera. So I'm going to take a picture here, and uh, no, there's no image stabilization on this particular lens, but I'm going to try the poor man's tripod, just jam this against here. I'm shooting it at F8, which is the maximum on a 230 inch sensor camera like this. But luckily, this camera does shoot ISO 50, and it does also have a built-in ND filter. So I've cranked that on. I'm going to be nice and steady. The picture's probably not going to be sharp, but the lens is so dusty, it wouldn't have been anyways. Oh, that's lovely. So it doesn't really matter how you look at this camera, it's ugly. Uh, it just wasn't a very pretty design. Comfortable, functional, but not much to look at. Although, to be honest, in 2004, it was a lot like this with many different manufacturers. Everybody was just trying weird designs, trying to make cameras functional, look modern, but there was just no design aesthetic to it. Either that or the SLR companies were really trying to protect their SLR business. Now, of course, battery life after 13 years, these batteries today are having a hard time, but back in the day, you're supposed to get about 250 shots, which was actually very decent for the time period, very average. But why people were disappointed in the Pro One, because it had to do that with big BP511A batteries. I mean, this is the same stuff you'd find in the 10D cameras and 20D cameras. So you get a huge battery here just to get acceptable battery life. Still, in the end, they work well, and you can pair this with your SLR as a Canon user. You know, pull this out for some shots, have your SLR for another and share the same batteries. Uh, what I'm doing today though is I'm definitely turning the camera off every single time and it actually had this very novel on off switch. I'm pretty sure they use this on some of the S cameras as well but it works well. Flick left to turn on, flick right to do playback and push the button to turn the camera off. Uh, I still feel though that every time that lens goes in and out I'm just losing battery life. I don't always shoot thin depth of field but when I do I shoot dos punto cuatro. You know, of course, I like making these unsung cameras of uh, yesteryear for you folks at home, but really, these are videos that I make for myself just as much because 
working in a camera store for 15 years, this brings back memories. I remember selling this camera. I remember looking at this, evaluating it. You know, is this going to be good for customers? And this is an unsung camera because frankly, it didn't sell very well. It wasn't really a very good camera. It had some nice benefits to it. It was actually compact at a time when other cameras were monstrously large. And it was the L-series lens. Everybody was excited about that. But there's better cameras out there, particularly the Minolta Dimage A2. That camera kicked ass. I love that thing. And if anybody has one we can borrow, please let me know because that camera is so much fun. But I think where the Canon Pro 1 really does shine is just as a, an example of the whole race of technology at the time. Just this, this constant endeavor to beat out other companies and, and surpass other people. And it was actually a really exciting time in the photographic industry, at least from a retailer standpoint. I hope you guys had a good time. Again, I apologize for just the uh, brown and yellow that you're gonna get in Alberta. That's just the way it is here. But you know, take your own trip down memory lane. Check us out, subscribe, comment to us, check out our Instagram and Twitter feeds as well, and we will see you very soon. Thanks for joining us for another Unsung Camera of Yesteryear.